how to prepare for the next stock market crash 2021. Many people are calling me every day asking how I have to invest to survive a crash. Because many people expect a crash, a financial crisis in this year 2021. They fear the money printing policy of the central bank and they want to be on the safe side. They want to invest very wisely. They, want, they don't want to be correlated to the market. What these investors have to do to survive the next financial crisis, the next stock market crash. The answer, you will see the answer in this video. Stay tuned. Caputo and Partners, SwissBankingLawyers.com. We fight for your money. Hello, here is Enzo Caputo speaking. I am a Swiss banking lawyer, the founder of Caputo and Partners, a boutique law firm located at Paradeplatz, Switzerland. I help people to better protect their assets with Swiss banks and to pay less tax. Today, I have a pleasure. It's a great pleasure for me having Oliver Schedel with me today. Oliver Schedel is a Swiss asset manager with 30 years professional experience and we want to know from Olivier what we have to do if we fear that something bad happened, if we want to protect, to be protected against the financial crisis, what we can do, Olivier? Well, first, thank you for having me. Um, I will try to outline a few principles and uh, tell you what um, I would recommend for these kind of scenarios. Very interesting, very interesting, because many people are asking me how I should invest. And if you have answers to this question, you will make happy many people. I'm pretty sure about that. The first thing to say, it is not new that we have crashes. Crashes have been around, well, since mankind. You remember uh, from your school days, probably the tulip crash in the 18th century in Holland. Uh, closer to us, we had the stock market crash in uh, 1987. Uh, then the dot-com bubble uh, bursting in 2001 yeah. and then the big financial uh, uh, stock market crash in 2008. So it happens with a certain regularity. However, it is very difficult to know when exactly something like this will happen. To predict. So it's very difficult oh. to predict. Right the right time. And why exactly. is this so difficult? Why uh, we have so many things, so many uh, instruments to measure the markets and whatever. Why it is so uh, difficult to predict when the next crash is coming? It's the human element. The human element. You have matrix, you have so many data which point to either overbought or uh, markets where you have a bubble. However, until such time, the investors who move in herds realize that something is changing, then it's mostly too late. Because then everybody goes into the same direction and you get a crash. So how can so you avoid that? You could say, well, we stay in cash. But the problem is, um, if you stay in cash for all the time, you don't make money. And you probably even lose money because the inflation you have uh, uh, in normal times uh, outweighs the benefits of uh, staying in cash. We fight for your money. Uh, so normally you have to have uh, a portfolio of different assets. Different your, assets. So your best protection is diversification. Diversification. So don't put all of your eggs in the same basket. Diversification Absolutely. is key. Absolutely key. So what are the different assets we can consider here? Okay, right now, let, let's uh, uh, figure it. The last real crash was 2008. But we had we a crash are, this year. We had a crash last year, tw uh, springtime 2020, 35% kind of... crash. Yeah. Yes, in a way you're yeah. right. But two months later, we were up already 20%. Yeah. And at the end of the year, we were higher than at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So it Absolutely. was not the right, um, how would I say, the, 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 the type of crash scenario which is a normal one. 
This was COVID related. Uh -huh. If you have a financial crisis, yeah. a financial crisis goes much deeper, much has deeper. much deeper effects and uh, will have also much harder consequences. Mm -hmm. And to avoid that as an investor, you have to diversify, first of all, in very different asset types or asset classes. For example? Stocks, real estate, um, maybe gold, uh, art, Bitcoins, uh, bitcoins real estate, bitcoins. alternative uh, assets. Commodities. Absolutely. Commodities. Alternative That's the assets we have. Cryptocurrency, alternative assets, art, car collection, Absolutely. paintings. Because drawers. very few times all asset classes go down the same at the same time. Mm -hmm. You might see a stock market crash where markets lose 40, 50 percent and the real estate market goes up no. or gold goes up or the Bitcoin might go up. No. So right since now, you don't know, you have to diversify. And what is interesting, you mentioned Bitcoin is, uh, or, or all cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Um, 10 years ago, it was something which was new, a little bit frowned upon, not really something you would uh, put in your portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have institutional investors who invest in cryptocurrency. That's why the and price is, is skyrocketing. Exactly. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. So institutional yeah. investors, pension funds, and I don't know whatever, uh, what all kind of investors are investing in Bitcoin and now Bitcoin is skyrocketing. So I would imagine that now more and more uh, investors will allocate a part of their global portfolio in cryptocurrencies. Yeah. I think this is something relatively new. So, so it's accepted. accepted. Yes. According yes. to classic Swiss asset management principles, uh, cryptocurrency is a fact, is accepted among the professional investment community. It starts. It starts. Not all banks offer this kind of... Yeah. Uh, but more and more banks, I know yes. more and more banks. For yeah. example, Merki Baumann is offering one, according to my opinion, one of the most secure storage uh, systems cold storage. So the banks are coming more and more also offering services for Bitcoin storage, which is very important that the Bitcoin storage is. And it's not only Bitcoin. Yeah. The storage goes also for gold. Yeah. You can hold gold um, as, a, as a position in your portfolio, but in a way it's the bank who owes you the gold. Yeah. If you want to have your hands on your gold bars. Either you put them into your own vault no. or you have centralized vaults in the mountain somewhere which are organized by private companies and where you have your cryptocurrencies or your gold bars or silver bars uh, uh, kept in a safe and uh, in a way which is not linked to the financial markets or to banks. Yeah. So you can right. also do the gold storage in different way. You can buy gold bars, but you can also buy coins. So you, can you have a diversification. You can buy different gold coins. You can buy gold. You can own gold in different ways, physically, and in, the, in your own house, or uh, in, a, in a private wall, or with the bank, or however. You can diversify. So diversification is key. Whatever you you like, diversification is very important. It's not good to concentrate all investments with one asset. Also having diff uh, different assets, for example, also commodities. What, you say, what do you think about commodities? They are not market correlated or are they market correlated? Or what, what is your Well, opinion? they are not stock market color rate, yeah. uh, correlated, but the market as such is, is wider than just the stock market. Uh, commodities in my opinion, will be very in, important in yeah. the next uh, uh, few months and few years. Why? Because we think after a very long time without real inflation uh, 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 ar around, this might now change. I think inflation is uh, somewhere looming and due to the very, very high indebtedness of countries, of corporations, due to zero interests or negative interests. Yeah. So that means that indebted, indebtedness is now at levels which, in my view, are not sustainable. Yeah. And longer term, how do you get rid of debt? 
Well, through inflation, this is very tempting. Yeah. So in what kind of commodities do you recommend to invest? What are the best commodities to invest? Let's say for a small investor, for an investor just having two, three million, so he cannot do uh, such a wide diversification. What he should, what a uh, small investor should do with two, three millions? Well, How it's relatively easy to buy gold coins or gold bars okay. because there is a market for that. But for example, it will be very difficult to uh, buy uranium or copper no. because you don't have the storage facility, you don't know where to buy and you are way too small uh, as, a, as a private client to do that. So there you need to buy either ETFs on the commodity, exchange traded funds, or you buy stocks from companies which are investing in these commodities. Uh -huh. I give you an example. Yes. If you are bullish on copper, yeah. you could buy Taseco from Canada. Yeah. Uh, if you are bullish on uranium, buy Cameco, the biggest uh, producer of uranium, also from Canada. Um, in, in gold, there are several big and medium-sized companies from the US, from Canada, Australia, South Africa, which can be bought very easily over the stock market. The nice thing also, if you are bullish on gold, you have to remember that stocks for gold companies have a leverage. So if gold goes up, let's say 5%, uh, a gold stock on average will go about two and a half times higher yeah. than the physical gold. Uh, so in these on both sides, types, uh, on both on sides, both sides. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, And other commodities that are also soft commodities. How can you invest in soft commodities, which are also very important? People have to eat, you know, in the Ukraine, soya, uh, corn, uh, other commodities. How can you participate in these kind of investments? These are also important. Uh, you you see now the price of soy beans is going up. Uh, this is more difficult, uh, but there are ETFs listed in America and Canada which are uh, suitable for investors. Uh, you cannot buy the commodity, uh, uh, obviously. So through right ETFs here. you can't participate. You could, you could buy futures, but then you need really a very, very good um, insight into how the yeah. commodity behaves. And with futures you're limited also uh, to the uh, lifetime of the yeah. future. Uh, that's two months, three very months, risky, whatever. So don't do that yeah. if you are a novice. I think you should rather buy uh, 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 an ETF on such a commodity. That's much safer and it has no uh, uh, defined lifetime. Same problem we have with real estate. So very difficult to, to differentiate in real estate because you need uh, many millions to, difference, to make diversification with real estate. So. How do you invest in real estate? What we have, we have here also, we have the funds, the real estate funds. We have, uh, uh, what do you, what can we offer? Municipality funds or, or, or what is here? What, what should we do? What, what is recommendable? I would say usually, depending also a little bit on, on where you are domiciled. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, the, the American real estate market is very different from the Swiss yeah. uh, or the, the London real estate market. Yeah. So it might be actually just a good idea to buy on the spot if you are allowed to uh, uh, to buy real estate as such. Yeah. But if you want to um, go through a fund, uh, there are several real estate funds of course. The, 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 the first question you have to ask yourself, are you bullish in general on real estate including commercial real estate and private homes or uh, is it for example, now due to COVID and, and the home office and so on, should you leave aside the commercial real estate for a while yeah. and concentrate on um, a, a private real estate, yeah. which I think is, is the thing to do. You find in Switzerland a, a series of, um, of uh, mutual funds. Yeah. Uh, the problem with the mutual funds is that sometimes you have a premium. So you have the net asset value, let's say at 150, but you, 100, you pay 170. Uh -huh. So you pay a premium uh, because the demand is bigger than the, the, the so real uh, supplies or the amount of real estate within the fund. So you have to be careful on that. Okay. And you have to keep, it's a long-term investment. Yes, short -term. definitely. So I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Long -term, long -term. But the nice thing is the fund is liquid. Uh -huh. So you can get out whenever you want. Yeah. 
get out of a real estate holding of an apartment, well, you need an agent and you have certain times difficulties in get, yeah, getting rid yeah. of, uh, of, uh, of your uh, flat. What I uh, wanted to come back actually is on yeah. stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. the most visible effect of a crash is in the stock market. Yeah. Um, what is very important is um, you should have especially in, in a time like today, where you had technology stocks going through the roof, yeah. uh, you had Bitcoin also at, at the highest uh, uh, levels. Um, which are the stocks which would um, survive a, a stock market crash relatively easily and get a recovery in a relatively short time. Yeah. And these have been always, without exception, the defensive stocks. Food, huh? Nestle, for example, yes. uh, you can have tobacco. Now, it's maybe politically not correct to talk about tobacco stocks, yeah. but <laughs> these are by far the best uh, 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 stocks in a stock market crash environment. So they recover they, very fast. They recover because they do not experience any substantial yeah. um, uh, 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 drawdown in, in sales. Yeah, yeah. Huh? You smoke about the same tomorrow after the stock market crash and before. Yeah. The same with food. Um, you can pharmaceuticals, for example. So which, yeah. which company do you recommend? For example, food and pharmaceutical. What are typical so-called, uh, I call them dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, right, so right. How do you... Oh, I mean, in food, you get certainly Nestle, you, can, you get Danone. In America, you have uh, uh, a, a couple of, of uh, big firms. In tobacco, for example, you got British American Tobacco, which is uh, uh, one of the leaders. Philip Morris. Uh, Philip Morris uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, you got Pfizer, yeah. you got uh, Novartis, Roche, uh, you got Sanofi in, in France. Um, it doesn't mean that you just have to buy closing your eyes, yeah. analyze your company. Um, uh, you, you know that in all these areas, you have always some companies who are being sued for whatever yeah. now because they sell products with too many sugar uh, levels or so on. So Coca-Cola might be a great stock in a, in a stock market crash, but it has a handicap that it has products which have a high sugar level. Yeah. Um, you might wish maybe to have something uh, more um, uh, focused on healthy food. Yeah. Health food in America, you have a, it's a, a, coming, a, yes, it's a, new, a few yeah. newcomers, yeah. Uh, uh, natural health food and, and, and um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the food company which does uh, uh, vegan burgers. Why not? Yeah, yeah of course, uh, because people like, to, people like to be healthy. People, yeah. they don't like the fast food. They like slow food, the good yeah. food, the healthy food. So there are also new companies that are coming, offering that kind of healthy food. Companies in the beauty sector, L'Oreal, yeah. for example, uh -huh. or in the luxury sector, luxury they come also, always back. They're also quite yeah. resistant. And you see that cash. now. Uh, the, the market in luxury products has not recovered yet in Europe. But in China, it's better than before. Uh -huh. uh, and when you have a global... What happened in China? What happened there? Well, actually, um, they managed the, the COVID crisis much better than, than we, yeah. not only in China, but uh, overall in Asia, yeah. uh, which means that people could go back to work, could yeah. back to their uh, pretty much former lives, and they are keen in spending what they earn at least a part in luxury products. Yeah. And instead of coming to Lucerne or wherever to spend their monies because right now they cannot travel, well, they spend it in the same boutiques, but in Hong Kong, in Macau, or in mainland China, or in, in, in Japan, or, or in Singapore, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So this is a, um, a sector which I can uh, uh, recommend. Um, and what is important is quality. Uh, you said the, yeah. the mammoth companies, yes, yeah. the dinosaurs uh, a company, the, dinosaurs the, the company. big capitalization, the they have enough cash, yeah. they will not go under because of a, a, a stock market crash. 
However, if you invest into a stock or in a, a company which is highly indebted, it might be the end because yeah. the, 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 the crash might um, uh, uh, make banks call back their loans you know, and they can't pay because they don't have cash flow. So be very careful with highly indebted companies. Okay, so you should invest in companies you need also, people need their product, their services also after a crash, also in a financial crisis, even in a recession or in a, in a depression. For example, let me give you an example. Let's take Facebook. You don't need Facebook, but you have to eat. Even if there is a crisis, you have to eat. You have to, uh, you to, to, to clean yourself. You, you need health products. You need medicine. You need food. You know, the essential things. But you don't need Facebook. So, for example, Facebook would be a company I, I would never invest in such a company. Because if a crash comes, well, what remains from Facebook? Nothing. Well, the thing with technology stocks is exactly yeah. that. Uh, yeah. uh, how far do you want to go? Uh, it is true that uh, companies like Google, uh, they have probably a good future. Yeah. Yes. Because they are data collectors, which yeah. Facebook is also a data collecting. Yeah, okay. You can, uh, you can see that from different angles. Yeah. Um, what I want to say also, w w the, the year 2020 was actually quite interesting yeah. because we had a crash there. Yeah. The recovery was extremely quick, but not for all stocks. The, the, um, the stocks from the um, technology sector yeah. uh, has closed the year much higher than what it started. Uh -huh. um, uh, about 40% higher. And uh, Tesla, for example, yeah. went about up uh, something like 700%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's incredible. A lot of stocks are still lower than where we were on the 1st of January 2020. Give us an example of that, the bad stocks. Oh, uh, 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 you know, uh, stocks from the retail sector, airlines, um, uh, a stock which I used to like, uh, which is in the duty free in airports, uh -huh. obviously, with a COVID crisis, yeah. you have whole areas which are not interesting for now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we come back to diversification yeah. because the good thing is if you is if so you important. think now that the time is ripe to reduce a little bit the technology stocks not getting out but reduce them where do you put your money you yeah. might put them in the laggards in in the airline stocks because at one point this covid crisis will be over yeah and people will so. fly again they will fly again, as far as possible. and uh, and and uh, you have to act a little bit counter uh, counter cyclical, and you have to have a certain diversification across all asset ca uh, classes see. and also a geographical one. Geographical, Look at China. Very important. Also China had yeah. yes, China had a positive GDP in two thousand and twenty. Yeah. Most countries are deep in the red. Yeah. Um, if you had investments in China, in A shares, you made money last year. Uh, if you That's had correct. in the in you had everything in the Eurostock 600, you lost money. So, so diversification is key, yes. absolutely. Yes. Remember, diversify your investments, and you will survive the next financial crisis. If you like information just like these, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Press the subscribe button below, and. By doing so, you will never miss a video. If you have a confidential question, if you want to speak with me, if you have a specific problem, just give me a call on the number here below, on the number below. Give me a call and let's discuss, free of charge, let's discuss your problem. You can also send me an email. Use the email indicated below. Thank you very much. Be rich and stay rich. I wish you a beautiful day. Thank you.